Okay guys, the country's in the grips of the coronavirus, but guess what? I'm not stopping. The number one question I always get, what's the best cam for my LS? Guess what? I can't answer that, but what I can answer are power combos. That's the question you need to ask. How can I make 500, 600, or 700 horsepower for my LS? How about a 4.8, 5.3, or a 6.0? Let's get started. In this video, I can't tell you what the best cam is, but I can show you how to make power. We're gonna start off with 400 horsepower. So I'll show you how to make 400 with a 4.8, with a 5.3, and with a 6.0. Now we're not gonna cover the 6.2 because to make 400 horsepower with a 6.2, you have to pull two spark plug wires. So we'll start off, this will be a series. We'll start off at 400, then we'll go to 500, then go to 600, and so on, all the way up to four digit power levels. So let's get going. I'm gonna show you how to make 400 horsepower with a 4.8, multiple ways, with a 5.3, multiple ways, and with a 6.0. So let's get started. Before we start off on our little adventure on how to make 400 horsepower from the different engine families, I need to clear something up. First of all, the power rating of 400 horsepower and all the subsequent power ratings, five, six, seven, eight, all the way up to 1,000, are all flywheel power numbers. The other thing I need to clear up, this is not in comparison to the factory rated power output. You see, the way that we test it is different from the factory. When the factory runs a factory motor on their dyno, they test it at the flywheel like we do, but they measure it differently, or should I say they test it differently. When they run it, they run it the same way it is in the car, meaning they run it with full exhaust, cats, tailpipes, everything. They have full accessories. They also have the full air intake, including the air filter and everything the way that it comes in the car. They also run it with the factory tune at the factory temperature. Now, when we run our test, we run it usually with headers and open exhaust, no accessories, just an electric water pump. We obviously optimize the tune and we very rarely run any kind of air intake, sometimes, sometimes just a radius entry on the throttle body. So our power numbers are usually higher than the factory, but that doesn't make a difference. See, we're starting from one point and we're going to another point. So whatever that difference is, that's how much power it was worth. So don't get wrapped up in the factory number versus our number, but do know, our numbers, our starting numbers, and our finishing numbers will probably be a little There's bit There's one final note on dyno numbers. If you're looking to convert the flywheel number that we generate to a wheel number like you get on a chassis dyno, subtract about 100 horsepower. Now it's not a percentage like a lot of people tell you. It's not 15% or 20%. It's actually much more of a fixed number plus a very small variation in the change in friction from a higher horsepower number. But I got a whole video coming out just on dyno testing with a lot of cool stuff. But right now, let's get to those power combos and find out how we did it. Let's get things started and take a look at the 4.8 liter. Now we're gonna to try to make 400 horsepower with this, but we obviously have to find out where we're starting from. So a stock 4.8 liter, remember we talked about the difference between the rated power output and the way that we test it. So our 4.8 liter, fresh from the junkyard, up on the dyno with headers and an optimized tune, no accessories, et cetera, et cetera, made 336 horsepower and 345 foot-pounds of torque, so it was doing pretty well. This is a good combination. This is kind of what we expect. We expect them to be in the 335 horsepower range and about 10 more foot-pounds of torque. They make a little bit more torque than they do power, and they tend to make peak power and peak torque out a little bit higher than the 5.3 does because they basically have the same intake manifold, the same camshaft, and the same cylinder heads. They just have less displacement, so they do everything just a little bit higher, not a lot. So. So now let's take a look and see what it takes to get to 400 horsepower with a 4.8. Now compared to a 5.3, the 4.8 obviously takes wilder cam timing to get there because it's starting out lower. So you have to add more camshaft. So what we did was, here's a camshaft that we put in here. And this is um, one of my kind of go-to camshafts for these. I did a lot of testing with this and it was this is, happened almost by accident. I didn't choose this cam spec. They just sent it to me and I tried it on a bunch of stuff and it worked out fairly well. This one was from Crane and it's the Crane 224 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here and you can take a look at it. But um, I've used it for a lot of stuff and then that's 224, 232 duration spec. 
Um, it's kind of right in the middle. It's, in my opinion, maybe a little bit on the big side for a 4.8, but if you want to get to that 400 horsepower number, this is the kind of cam that you want to have. Now, we also did an interesting test, uh, and by the way, with that camshaft, we made 414 horsepower, and peak torque was up at 362 foot-pounds. Obviously shifted that over a little bit from the factory cam, made peak torque a little bit higher. Um, as a matter of fact, it, it remained basically flat. Oh, 363 foot-pounds out there at 5,400. So it stayed pretty flat. We had a nice little torque plateau, as we like to call those for the LS stuff. It's not a torque peak, it's a torque plateau because it extends for sometimes five or 600 RPM. It's really good. So that's the camshaft we made over 400 with, and that will do that, no problem. And obviously you need the valve spring package to go along with that. But here's another interesting test. Same motor, but we had a and another combination that made over 400 horsepower. And this one made 409. But this was in preparation for a turbo test that we ran. So this was a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 2 turbo cam, I believe. Yes, and so I'll put the specs up there, but it had a little bit more duration, um, a little bit more intake duration anyway than the 224 cam did. And uh, you can check out the lift here and the lobe separation and stuff, but it just goes to show you, I, I wanted to point that out not to show you that one, an NA cam is better than the turbo cam or anything like that. I just wanted to show you that these kinds of numbers to make 400 horsepower is possible with a number of different cams and not just from spec standpoint, but from a different number of different manufacturers. This is our cams here came from BTR and one from Crane. But if you get your cam and it has similar specs from Texas Speed or Comp Cams or Cam Motion or whoever, it's going to kind of do this. So I just want you to see this kind of combination will make this kind of power no matter where you get it from. So now let's take a look at something. I mean, there's a big spread there between the factory cam and the aftermarket cams. So, you know, we went from 335 up to over 400 to 414, but what about something kind of in the middle? So I wanted to show you that too. And this is a Comp 265 cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. You can take a look at that, but it's a, like a 212, 218 duration. And kind of more like a, what you would, a lot of guys consider as truck cams. So with that camshaft, obviously it made less than the, the bigger cams, but it still made 382 horsepower. So it did well, and the, the torque wasn't down a lot, so it had a good average curve. Torque was 359 foot-pounds of torque. It just kind of fell off at the top compared to the bigger cams, but we would expect that. But this is, this is where you probably would be. And obviously there were milder cams that would be lower than that. I just kind of want to give you an idea of what's possible with the, the 4.8, but to make 400 out of a 4.8, and, and subsequently that's going to be closer to 300 at the, at the wheels, you need a fairly good camshaft in a 4.8 and be prepared for it to happen at a fairly high RPM. If we were to keep keep revving this thing, it would keep pulling to 7,000 RPM without any problem, even the, with that 224K. So now let's take a look and see what happens when we try all this stuff and try to get 400 horsepower out of a 5.3. Now making 400 horsepower from a 5.3 obviously is a lot easier than making it from a 4.8 and the reason is because we've already started a lot closer to 400 horsepower with the 5.3 just all stock. We ran this the same way we ran the 4.8 with long tube headers and a Mazir electric water pump and run with the Holly HP management system dialing everything in and this one made 352 horsepower and 383 foot-pounds of torque so it's kind of normal for these 5.3s. This is a good one and it made good power. But since we're already at 355, it's pretty easy to get to 400. And we can put almost, on the 5.3, you can put almost any camshaft you want in. I mean, you have to put a really small one to not get to 400. Even some of the uh, factory cams will get us there. So let's take a look at that. So this is, for instance, that's an LS6 cam. So that made over 400. It made 400 and eight horsepower and made 389 foot-pounds of torque so kind of shifted the curve over a little bit as you can see it lost power through a lot of the curve which you I, ideally you don't want to happen I mean it'd be nice to have more power everywhere that's the ideal camshaft um, we saw the same kind of thing when we ran a factory LS9 cam for instance 
Same kind of deal. The LS9 cam makes a little bit more than the LS6 does, loses more down at the very bottom, but it's more than a 400 horsepower cam if you want to put that in. That one may actually made 419, so it's certainly possible. But I, the thing that I don't like about those cam choices is that you lose so much power down low, and I don't, I don't think that that's a good combination. I'll show you what a good camshaft is that makes 400 horsepower. This one was a Crane uh, 210, I call, I'm calling it. I'll put the specs up here so you guys can take a look and see what the specs are. But it, you can do this with lots of different camshafts, as I said, with the 4.8 stuff. You can do it from all the manufacturers. They all have camshafts. Um, a, a good truck cam is probably going to get you, you know, a stage two or three truck cam probably going to get you o over this range too. But see, that's a, um, I'm going to get rid of the LS6 and the LS9 so we can just concentrate on this one camshaft. And see, this is nice because like the others, it made over 400 horsepower. In fact, it made 412 horsepower. But that the other thing that it did is it didn't really lose any power except for the very bottom down around 2500. But through most of the curve from 2900 on up, it equaled or bettered the stock cam, which is good. Then made 406 foot-pounds of torque. And so it was, it was healthy and torquey through most of the curve. Plus it had our 400 number, which is easy to do. Much easier with the 5.3 than it was with the 4.8. So again, this is a cam swap. You know, it's an easy to do cam and springs. There are some instances like with those factory cams, if you just put the factory spring in, like an LS3 spring in, you can run those. So that's a really cheap option. But again, the trade-off, you lose stuff down low. A good cam like this, like the aftermarket cam, you pick up power everywhere. So you get what you pay for. Now let's find out how ultra easy it is to make all this power with a 6 liter. Well, this is the easiest of all. <laughs> now we're looking at the 6 liter. And the way that you can make 600 horsepower with a, or, or 400 horsepower with a 6 liter is simply by putting it up on the dyno. <laughs> We ran the 6 liters in LQ4, has the 317 heads. Basically, this was just kind of a rebuild. Um, we just put it back together with fresh rings and bearings. We honed it, um, put put the 317s on, and I don't even think we treated the 317s to a valve job. I think we did the um, razor blade rebuild on them. And this has the factory truck manifold and everything. So equipped with the factory cam, the factory LQ4 cam, run with long tube headers, and the way that we ran the 48 and the 5.3, this thing made 406 horsepower and 439 foot-pounds of torque. So you can see much torquier than the 4.8 or the 5.3. What I'm going to do here, now that it's this easy to make this kind of power, to make 400 horsepower out of a 6 liter, I'll show you, we'll compare um, all of the stock configurations. So we can take a look at, here is the 6 liter versus the 5.3. And remember, these are all run the same way. So this kind of comparison is actually much better than comparing them um, you know, in a different manner with the, with the factory stuff. So here's the 4.8. So as we see here, you know, if we look at the torque curve, the torque curve gets better and better as we go up in displacement. No big surprise there. The power output goes up. The interesting thing, and, and I'm not sure if this was a function of the particular 5.3 and the particular 4.8 that we had, but you can see that the 4.8 and the 5.3 actually kind of converge as we go up higher in RPM. And that might be a function of the 4.8 um, being able to, or wanting to run higher than the 5.3 does, because with the same heads, cam, and intake, the smaller displacement will obviously is going to make peak power at a slightly higher RPM than the 5.3 does. Maybe the 5.3 is falling off with the that mild stock cam timing more than the 4.8 does. But at any rate, you can see that here. Here, this is uh, where we where we started with all of them. And then when we added camshafts to the 4.8 and the 5.3, bigger cam with the 4.8 and then slightly smaller cam with the 5.3 and then no cam with the 6.0. So next time in the next video, we're going to take a look at the 500 horsepower range. So we're going to show what it takes to get to 500 horsepower with a 4.8, with a 5.3, and with a 6.0. And then also we'll kind of add a 6.2 liter into the mix. And as we go up in power, we're going to start introducing things like nitrous and force induction. So there'll be some cool stuff. We'll be able to see how to get it with nitrous, how to get it with a supercharger, how to get it with a turbo, obviously with the turbo stuff and with the supercharger and even with, to some extent with the nitrous, it makes it really easy to get to some of these power outputs. So we'll check that out in the next video. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what do we learn? Well, there are a couple of takeaways from this video. The first thing is on a small motor, it takes more camshaft to reach the same power level as a bigger motor. No big surprise there. And also we make more torque with a 5.3 than we do as a 4.8 and more with a 6.0 than we do with a 
But the real takeaway here is if you want to make 400 horsepower, which would be about 300 horsepower at the wheels, it's very easy with an LS. All it takes is a cam swap. Now things are going to get a little more difficult when we step up to 500 horsepower. And just like with this video, we'll show you the levels in between because that's actually where most of the LS stuff is going to wind up. Now it gets harder and harder to make 500 horsepower with a 4.8 and harder to make it with a 5.3. It's actually pretty easy still with a 6.0 and very easy with a 6.2. Thanks for tuning in guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep the videos coming.